Om Ajnana Timirandasya Pyananjana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tazmai Sri Guru Venama Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Vidati Swa Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Yuvishesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Panchakalpa Tribhyasta Kripa Sindhu Bhayavacha Vatita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namodama Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adwaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So to begin, I would like to congratulate you devotees in Ukraine for persevering with your service, uh, even under such difficult circumstances. Um, and one of the important services that you do is uh, maintain the deity worship. Uh, in the history of Hare Krishna land in Juhu, Bombay, we also faced uh, many challenges. And uh, the deities moved <laughs> so many times. Uh, His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami said that we often hear about devotees performing austerities for the sake of the deities. But at Hare Krishna land, the deities performed austerities for the sake of the devotees. Um, yeah, we had a, um, like a shed, sort of a shed uh, for th them. Um, and then uh, one day, the uh, Bombay Mun Municipal Corporation came onto our property, uh, and they were supported by a, a paddy wagon from the police, saying that our temple was unauthorized and they were going to demolish it. Uh, it was not unauthorized. Actually, we had permission for one year and I had just renewed the permission. So when uh, the, the leader of the group said it was unauthorized, I said, no, it, it's authorized. And I went and I got my file and I showed him but he was not interested because he had been bribed uh, to do this nasty work. And uh, so they, they came with uh, sledgehammers and they were starting to, to break the roof over the temple shed, the Darshan Manda part, and um, different devotees were rushing up to try to stop them. And those devotees were taken and put in the police uh, paddy wagon. And one very heroic devotee uh, named Maita, Maita Lee Dasi, she, she was a woman and she stood in front of the deity doors 
And because she was a woman, they were a little hesitant to manhandle her. Uh, but eventually they they also uh, dragged her away by the hair. And she was kicking and screaming. And later she looked up and commented that she would go back to that head, kicking and screaming. So we were all uh, taken to the police station, except for one devotee, a Gujarati young man, uh, Manasvi Das. He was watching the whole thing. And uh, so he called a life member of ours who had connections with Bal Thakre, who was the founder and leader of the Shiv Sena political party. And he and was he was very powerful and very staunch Hindu. So he phoned the municipal commissioner and said that, uh, you know, this uh, demolition of the temple is taking place and uh, you have to stop it. And the police commission, the uh, municipal commissioner said, um, it's not authorized, which, in, which wasn't true. It was authorized. And Baal Thakare said, um, don't forget who this city belongs to. In other words, it was like a veiled threat. So then the municipal commissioner said, all right, Baal Sab, all right, all right, we'll stop it. <clears throat> so he phoned the local K ward and the K ward officer came running personally to the site to stop the uh, demolition. And then, you know, we were, uh, we were released from the police custody and we returned to the temple. And there was a picture of Lord Nishringadev over the uh, deity's doors. And that was there. And I strongly felt that, that Lord Nishingadev had protected the deities. And then, you know, we, we resumed the worship. Um, it, was, it was difficult. Uh, I remember one devotee was, um, he was holding an umbrella over his head because it was raining while he was doing the RT. Uh, but then eventually we 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 rebuilt that uh, that little temple. So um, you know, deity worship is very important. Uh, there are some uh, beautiful verses by Sri Rupa Goswami uh, that basically say that 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 the deity of Krishna is Krishna himself. And anyone who thinks otherwise is, uh, is, is an offender, ignorant and, 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 and offender. So again, I congratulate you for uh, maintaining the the deity worship, even in such uh, difficult situations. Uh, I've been to Ukraine a few times myself. Um, and yeah, the, the devotees are, are wonderful. And uh, of course, you have His Holiness Naranjan Swami Maharaj, who's um, incredible. Yeah, I came uh, for his Vyasa Puja to Ukraine one year. And um, I was very impressed with 
with the devotees there. And I pray that this uh, situation improves. Um, I don't know if I should say this, but <laughs> His Holiness. You can say it. Yeah, His Holiness Ranjan Swami commented that, um, that Yamaraj will have to create a special hell for Putin. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, I, I, I really pray that, um, that you're able to maintain your service and uh, your Krishna consciousness um, amidst all the fighting and hardships and uh, you know, main, maintain the true worship, which is uh, so important. Uh, according, well, Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu enumerated uh, 64 items of devotional service. And of the 64, he said that five are most potent. And the five are Sadhu Sangha, Nama Kirtana, Bhagavat Shravana, Mathura Vasa, and Murti Sharanvita Sevana. And Murti Sharanvita Sevana means uh, to worship the deity uh, with faith and veneration. That's one of the five most potent uh, forms of devotional service. And Rupa Goswami says that by even a little contact with any of those five processes, one uh, can awaken dormant love for Krishna. And the first item is Sadhu Sangha. And Sadhu Sangha, of course, in general terms, means association with devotees. Uh, but Sadhu Sangha, as uh, described by Rupa Goswami has a very specific definition. And he says, uh, Swajati Ashaye Snigde Sadhu Sangha Svatovare. And Swajatiya, in a more literal sense, means, you know, part of the same caste or community. And for us, it would mean uh, followers of Srila Prabhupada. Swajati Ashaye Snigde. And Snigde means uh, affection. And in Srila Prabhupada's translation uh, of the verse, he says, who has a similar affection for the Lord, and that is also uh, valid. Uh, but Snigde can also be taken to mean that the sadhu should be affectionate to the devotee. Um, and Svatovare means that the sadhu should be more advanced than oneself. So Svatati Ashe Snigde. Sadhu, Sangha, Satovari. So that's one of the five. And, and as I mentioned, one of the other five is um, uh, Murti Sharan Vita Sevana, to uh, worship the deity with faith and uh, veneration. So I'll just, I think I'll just read a little bit from my book. <laughs> I'll build you a temple to do the story about deity worship.
So this is about uh, deities and deity worship. So in Calcutta, Shiva Prabhupada raised the question, what is the duty of the spiritual master and what is the duty of the disciple? Then he had given the answer. The duty of the spiritual master is to serve Krishna. And the duty of the disciple is to assist the spiritual master. He had given the example that it was his duty to see that the temple floor was clean. And so the disciple washing the floor could think, it is my spiritual master's duty to keep the floor clean. And I am assisting him by cleaning it. In his eight stanzas glorifying the spiritual master, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur states, Sri Vigraha Dana Nityanana Shringara Tan Mandira Marjanado Yuktasya Bhaktam Shani Unjato Vande Guru Sri Charanara Vindam. The spiritual master is always engaged in the temple worship of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. He also engages his disciples in such worship. They dress the deities in beautiful clothes and ornaments, clean the temple, and perform other similar worship of the Lord. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of such a spiritual master. Shigura Vastaka 3. Srila Prabhupada explains in his purport to Srimad Bhagavatam 2.3.22, quote, Sri Vigraha is the archa, or suitable worshipable form of the Lord. And the disciple should be engaged in worshiping the deity regularly by Sringar. Proper decoration and dressing, as also by Mandira Marjana, the matter of cleansing the temple. The spiritual master teaches the neophyte devotee all these kindly and personally to help him gradually in the realization of the transcendental name, quality, form, etc. of the Lord. Again, Srimad Bhagavatam 2.3.22 purport. Because of our material conditioning and atheistic tendencies, we may tend to neglect the deity, to think the deity is merely a stone or metal statue, not the supreme personality of Godhead. But done in the proper mood, with faith and veneration, Srimutira Shraddhaya Sevana, Worshipping the deity is one of the five most potent processes of devotional service. But if we mistake the deity for a stone, metal, or wooden statue or idol, we are doomed. Referring to the deity of Krishna, to the Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, the author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita states, Sakshad Rajendra Sutta Ite Nahi Ana Yebe Age Kare Tanri Patimahi Nagyana. Without a doubt, he's referring to the deity. Without a doubt, he is directly the son of the king of Raja. Only a fool considers him a statue. That's CC Adi 5, 225. And then the next verse. 
Se aparari tara naika nistara, Gora nara kete pade kiba viba ara. For that offense, he cannot be liberated. Rather, he will fall into a terrible, hellish condition. What more should I say? And commenting on this verse, Srila Prabhupada states, those who are actually very serious about devotional service do not differentiate between the form of the Lord made of clay, metal, stone, or wood, and the original form of the Lord. The statue of Lord Krishna and Krishna himself, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, are not different because the Lord is absolute. Even if one has not developed this consciousness, one should accept it theoretically from the instructions of the spiritual master and should worship the Archimorti or form of the Lord in the temple as non-different from the Lord. Thus, Srila Prabhupada uh, kindly trained us in the course of and as part of his service to the deities. <clears throat> so, my dear devotees, uh, we have a little time left, and I would like to know if we should uh, leave some time for questions and comments. Uh, it would it would be excellent if you can take some questions. Uh, yes, and would, giving you know giving. I would love to. I would love to. Yeah, I, and, and anybody can speak, and then I can I can translate myself, or the translator can translate it as you like. Either is fine with me. Whatever suits you. Okay. Maybe you. Maybe you. You're very present and involved. But whatever. Okay. No oh boy, it's not easy. Uh, okay. If anybody has a question for Maharaj? Or a comment, a reflection. The, the be best, best is to write your question, if you have a question, in the general chat, uh, in whatever language you like, and I'll just read it out. I personally have a question. <laughs> if I can yeah. ask. I, 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 I mean, and there are two questions from uh, brahmacharis who are there in the temple. And maybe somebody else wants to type in a question. Uh, I will ask a simple question. And maybe not. It's actually very much related to where we are. Um, okay. And the story that you told us. Thank you so much for that story about how uh, your temple was uh, all, almost rang, rang sank by the local police. And uh, because they were bribed. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, and I have a question is, you know, how devotees should react to the fact that some temples in the war are being ransacked or uh, one temple like in Kramatorsk was destroyed by missile. Uh, how, how we have, have to feel about it? What do we have to like pretend it's all kind of okay or should we have some emotional response to that? Maybe it's a general question, but just to see what's your... Well, it's very sad that, um, of course, it's very sad that there's so many victims in this, I would say, unnecessary war. But it's more sad when uh, devotees and temples are affected. And I think when that happens, 
Uh, it's natural to feel sorry. And I don't think we should try to suppress that feeling. But at the same time, what can we do? You know, we have to just take shelter of Krishna and Krishna consciousness. And um, yeah, I think of a verse which uh, in, in the Nectar of Devotion, which uh, Srila Prabhupada says should be the guide of all devotees. And that, and um, the, the, the verse is from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 14th chapter. And the, um, the purport to the verse in the Bhagavatam is also a very instructive. Um, but I'll, I will just read what the Nectar Devotion says. Thank you. So, um, the verse is Tate nukampam susamikshamano vajana evat makritam vipakam vidvag vapu bir vidaran namaste jiveto yo mukti pade sadaya bhak. The translation is, my dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions to his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart, words, and body is surely eligible for liberation for it has become his rightful claim. And in the Nectar Devotion, Srila Prabhupada writes, this should be the guide for all devotees. And coming to, to the actual verse, in the purport, this is very instructive, my dear devotees, please pay attention. Srila Sridhar Swami explains in his commentary that just as a legitimate son has to simply remain alive to gain an inheritance from his father, one who simply remains alive in Krishna consciousness, following the regulative principles of bhakti yoga, automatically becomes eligible to receive the mercy of the personality of Godhead. In other words, he will be promoted to the kingdom of God. The word susamikshamana indicates that a devotee earnestly waits for the mercy of the Supreme Lord, even while suffering the painful effects of previous sinful activities. And this next point is very important and um, significant. Lord Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that a devotee who fully surrenders unto him is no longer liable to suffer the reactions of his previous karma. However, because in his mind, a devotee may still maintain the remnants of his previous sinful mentality. The Lord removes the last vestiges of the enjoying spirit by giving his devotees punishments that may sometimes resemble sinful reactions. Although a devotee has surrendered to the Lord's devotional service, until he is completely perfect in Krishna consciousness, he, maintain, 
may maintain a slight inclination to enjoy the false happiness of this world. The Lord therefore creates a particular situation to eradicate the remaining enjoying spirit. This unhappiness suffered by the sincere devotee is not technically a karmic reaction. It is rather the Lord's special mercy for inducing his devotee to completely let go of the material world and return home back to Godhead. A sincere devotee earnestly desires to go back to the Lord's abode. Therefore, he willingly accepts the Lord's merciful punishment and continues offering respects and obeisances to the Lord with his heart, words, and body. Such a bona fide servant of the Lord, considering all hardships a small price to pay for gaining the personal association of the Lord, certainly becomes a legitimate son of God, as indicated here by the words diabach. Just as one cannot approach the sun without becoming fire, one cannot approach the supreme pure, Lord Krishna, without undergoing a rigid purificatory process, which may appear like suffering, but which is in fact a curative treatment administered by the personal hand of the Lord. So my dear devotees, all these reversals and um, the, the, the um, cons consequent uh, pain and suffering serve a purpose uh, to help us uh, let go of whatever remaining enjoying spirit we have. Uh, so that we can go back home, back to Godhead, without any impediment. So, yeah, we should, yeah. I mean, we don't like reversals, but sometimes reversals uh, serve a purpose to accelerate our uh, progress in Christian consciousness. Thank you so much, Maharaj. It's so enlivening, and thank you. I have one more question from the Brahmachari Ashram here, and it's a serious question, but I, I I'll just read it out. If I will worship deities in the temple, and after some time, I will see Krishna in them, how much of this ability to see Krishna in them depends on, on my worship? Well, uh, I, I did read some verses that uh, re, re, reinforce the idea that the deity is uh, Krishna himself. And uh, by your engaging in deity worship, Srila Prabhupada said that by engaging in deity worship, you realize you're not the body. And by your engaging in deity worship uh, with, you know, Murti Shradanvita Sevana, with a faith and veneration, uh, you will gain that vision uh, to see the deity as uh, the Lord himself. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, yayata mam prapadyante, as they surrender to me, I reciprocate accordingly. And Srila Prabhupada has commented that if you see the deity as stone, then for you the deity will remain as stone forever. But if you see the deity as the Lord himself, uh, the Lord will speak to you. So, yeah, <laughs> I congratulate you for worshiping the deity. And, and I pray that as you 
uh, continue worship. Um, yeah, you get more and more realization that that the deity is the, the Lord Himself. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I mean, uh, there is a continuation to this question, and I just read it a little. Some you can say some devotees just never see that. They don't see, you know, what it says here. Uh, some people complain, some devotees complain, say, I just see statues, I don't see the Lord. And, <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm like that, or somebody is like that, but just a general. So what do we, can we, how can we help them? What can we do to them so that they will uh, not just see somebody engaged enthusiastically in the deity worship, but how do we, <laughs> I guess, how do we change their visions and be able to see? And that's a question. I guess the first question is whether he's referring to devotees or non-devotees. Well, devotees, uh, okay. Devotees often complain that they um, come to the deities and only see the statues. And I invite them to serve and tell them about how inspiring it is to serve the deities, but they re reply, well, we can see you and we can see other devotees are inspired, but we ourselves, we cannot really see that. So how we help such devotees, not non-devotees, the devotees, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, there's so many different kinds of devotees. Well, I mean, his idea that they should engage in deity service is perfect. I mean, they may have whatever doubts they have, and that's another point. But if they make the experiment, you know, he can tell them, all right, just make an experiment, try to worship them and see the result. You know, let them make the experiment and definitely they'll get some mercy from the deity and their faith that the deity is the Lord will increase. I mean, if they're not willing to make the experiment, then I don't know what can be done. But if they're taking a position, they should verify the position by <laughs> making an experiment and and doing deity worship and, and seeing the result. Thank you. <laughs> the, the word experiment is so, so, so clear. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Make an experiment. Uh, 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 okay, and a, a question came uh, again. I think it follows on from that. But what can obstruct our building relationships with the deity forms uh, or deities? What can, what can be the obstacle? I mean. Uh, it's too too general to uh, it's probably not a class for you <laughs> but, but thank you uh, uh, just maybe briefly yeah well yeah the obstacle is um the ignorance or or illusion and that obstacle can be removed by hearing by reading as we've been reading uh, so many important uh statements about deity worship, the deity and, and deity worship. And there's a, a, a verse, I, I could read it. Uh, uh, our, it begins, Arche Shila Deer, and it, and it ends uh, Nardaki. And the purport of the verse, or not the purport, well, yeah, the purport, the meaning is that if someone sees the deity as stone, he is a resident of hell, or he has a hellish mentality. He's not a kisa. He has, uh, he's a resident of hell. So uh, we should read, you know, these statements to to purify ourselves, to remove our ignorance and to help us appreciate that the deity is the Lord himself. 
Thank you. I know we we took more time that we agreed originally already, <laughs> and I, I I feel so guilty because your time is absolutely priceless. It's the best donation that we can get. Uh, I mean, and maybe we can reciprocate somehow later. I don't know how, but uh, we also hope that you can join us next Monday as well. Yeah, uh, we will be. To. Thank you so much. Yes. And we have some more questions and maybe we will work on them and kind of try to present them better next time. Uh, and yeah, we, that, can, that's... we can keep those for next time. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I'm so grateful to you, my person. I'm sure everybody else is, is really grateful. Let's, let's all unmute and say, Jai Giraj Maharaj, Jai Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. If we're going to end now, yes, then I suggest we conclude with Vaishnav Pranam. Panchakalpa Trubhyasta Sasitu Vyavacha Chaitanam Bhagavad Gita Vyavacha Namaha Anantakoti Vaishnavindi Ki Jai Jai Vanchakalpa Ki Jai Ukraine Yatra Ki Jai Hare Krishna Thank you again